Hey, hi, hi. Welcome back to BRR Knowledge Center. In this today's session, we'll talk about the demonstration part of K6 load testing. Okay. So we have so many tools in the market where we can use it for load testing, kind of uh, single user or multiple users or concurrent users, whatever you wanted to test it. But this K6 is something different compared to uh, other tools available in the market. So because this is the open source framework where it uh, uh, built to make performance testing fun for developers where it is having easy syntax uh, whoever is aware of uh, javascript like you know writing of some javascript functions or javascript code or javascripting then it is very very useful for the developers because it, it's pretty easy to uh, have to learn or write basic scripts was javascript when you are uh, when when you when you are aware of JavaScript or you are uh, uh, no experience in JavaScript, it is very useful to you know uh, or start learning of cases because it is ha it is uh, having JavaScript syntax. So as I mentioned, this is the open source. Uh, hence, people are referring this. Also, it is um, you know uh, uh, mapping to a Grafana dashboard or Elasticsearch where you can export the results or dashboard results to no cloud uh, uh, very easily with the CLI commands because uh, K6 uh, uh, stands out of uh, because of its ability to encapsulate usability and performance while also bundling tools like command line interface to execute scripts and a dashboard to monitor the test run results. Okay, so because of uh, uh, easy syntax and the CLI commands, it is more uh, uh, popular nowadays to uh, uh, run low test. So for any technology website. So uh, basically it is supporting continuous integration through Jenkins and other frameworks where you can simply uh, include the script of K6 and then it is going to run as part of CI process. And also you have uh, uh, no integration plugin in Azure cloud platform where you can include that K6 plugin into your Azure pipeline. Then it will start the uh, no kind of execution of uh, K6 load test along with your you know, continuous integration steps like uh, uh, build and you know uh, deploy and unit test case running. And then you uh, automatically see the K6 load testing if you include K6 kind of uh, you know syntax into your Azure pipeline. So let's quickly get into this demonstration part like by just creating one sample you know uh, 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 load test with using K6. So before that, I think, um, so you must uh, understand that. So uh, we should have a K6 uh, package to be installed into your local system. Uh, we already installed it in the earlier session. If you are not uh, visited or not seen the uh, earlier session of a K6 load testing introduction, please go and uh, see that video. So, and also please subscribe this channel for more videos coming in the series. So I mentioned that there is a chocolate package manager in the windows where you can install through chocolate package manager, like, you know, Chaco install K6, where it is going to install your K6 software. So I already installed it. So you can see uh, if it is installing a system, then it will, you know, uh, display the help about your, you know, K6 package in your system. So you can see here K6 command, uh, we have to use it, uh, uh, as, uh, as prime command and then uh, followed by followed with k6 you can use these commands okay if you want to see the version of application so it is say something i uh, know version it will tell you the version of k6 being installed into your system right and also if you wanted to see uh, see the stats and stats of a test feed and if you wanted to run a load test you use a run command and a couple of other you know help and completion and cloud basically if you wanted to run this load test on cloud, right, as I mentioned, Azure pipelines or Jenkins, if you wanted to uh, export the uh, test results to cloud, so you just start running this K6 cloud instead of K6 run. And before that K6 cloud, I think you have to log into the cloud. So you have a Grafana, uh, you know, login account where it exports your results into Grafana dashboard. Let's let's discuss that in the next coming session. So we'll uh, concentrate on this. Today's session is only demonstration part. So now I'm going to create example file here in the K6 folder like demo.js. As I mentioned, this is purely a JavaScript syntax, right? 
So first thing is, uh, so if you want to uh, browse or request any uh, API or a publication, you must have a protocol, uh, HTTP. And also you must have a HTTP uh, no, uh, kind of uh, library to uh, no, um, navigate to get our post or patch or update HTTP graphs. So first thing is we have to import um, HTTP from this time from K6, right? Once you import it, here you need to um, make note on a uh, couple of things here. In K6 was uh, two things was options, and another thing was default, right? So this is the default uh, function, which it is going to start your load test execution. Whatever uh, logic uh, you are going to mention to the default, it is going to be uh, executed by default by cases. So what is this options? So options is nothing but kind of configuration you are going to provide it for your load test, like kind of uh, virtual users count or kind of time you are going to assign it to your load test. So far now, I think I'm going to specify a virtual user count is one. So to specify virtual user count in uh, K6, we have to say VUS. Let us say one. This is one user, right? And duration, I'm going to specify here in a single course, you have to specify one second. That means one second, I'm going to specify it for this one user. That's fine. I think this is a simple demonstration and I don't want to give more options here and to get confused you guys. Okay, I'm only mentioning virtual users here, virtual users we use this. And this is the duration part I'm going to specify it here. Now coming to the default function export default. So here you need to write your uh, logic using HTTP. I'm saying HTTP uh, dot get. So I'm going to specify uh, one of the API or website where it uh, get into that website and get the response back and then give the response uh, matrix status, stats, okay? So for, I think to do this, I'm going to give a kind of uh, any website. Uh, I think uh, I'll give this, um, I think I'll do my uh, YouTube channel. I'm going to give it this, okay? And now see like how it is running. It's a simple, uh, uh, you know, stuff I'm going to give it. And also, apart from this, I'm running through, uh, you know, uh, if you are running through uh, non uh, TLS uh, and like, you know, HTTP, purely HTTP. So what, are, what you have to do is, you have to specify that insecure TLS based by true. If it is insecure, uh, uh, TLS stuff is coming. So just mention it. Insecure TLS verify true, right? And also, uh, no connection refuse. No connection refuse is false. These two are the uh, basic things you do. You, you need to mention that otherwise it will take uh, the default values for that. So once it is done, my job is done. So this is uh, now ready for executing uh, my script using cases. So the command to execute a K6, as I mentioned, was K6 run, right? So K6 run basically uh, use it for uh, running uh, your script, okay? There's something uh, you need to specify here. K6 run the script name, you know, it's demo.js. If you wanted to run through, uh, uh, you know, what will you the count, like for 10 times, right so run this command k6 run uh, minus i 10 time demo.js same time if you wanted to run uh, five users for five users you just mention minus u5 and minus i10 and then one so these are a couple of commands it is going to give you when you type like k6 uh, help so you just go through all these commands and use it uh, based on the requirement you are having it okay so for now, so we are just running k6 run demo.js so that it will start running my script. And you can see the beautiful UI here. So, uh, what is that? No connection, no connection. Sorry, reuse, it's not reduce. Sorry. Now let's again read on that. So you can see here scenarios. One scenario, one max virtual users, 31 seconds max duration. It was taken for one users. 
If you look at here, a uh, couple of uh, fields here that are received and data signed and the HTTP request block and the connecting and the duration. This is where I think people are uh, interesting to see that like, this is what the request, uh, you know, starts here, like average starts, average time it has been taken and the minimum time it has been taken and medium and max and uh, uh, average of 90 request um, time it is taken, 90 per request time it has been taken, et cetera, et cetera. And other way, I think you can see the failed request here. So far we don't have any failed request and, uh, and uh, request receiving and request sending and TLS handshaking and waiting time. And here HTTP request, if you, if, if you look at here, I think five requests have been sent for the one user. Okay, so that means uh, I mentioned only one user and one second duration I mentioned it because in, in, in the one second of duration, I think uh, uh, almost five requests have been sent. Iterations, you can, you can see here iterations are five. In, in the span of five seconds, uh, one second. So one second, it has been sent five iterations. Five requests has been sent, and it has taken time four point eight eight two six two six seconds for each request. So in the load test, when you are uh, writing the script for load testing, we must have some thin time between each request. Otherwise, we cannot capture the stats for uh, each request, right? So that's where the um, um, basic, you know, kind of pretty design you must understand to put some think time between requests. So when you're running for multiple requests, batch requests, I think we'll see that in the coming sessions, like how you are going to run batch a request. And each batch, you must have some think time so that you'll have a time to capture the uh, response and request and the data uh, being received and sent to a server kind of stuff. So to do that, um, uh, no think time uh, part of load testing, what we need to do is we need to do some uh, sleep. So for that, I'm uh, no importing sleep uh, from again, you know, uh, I think this time from K6, only K6. Okay. And here, sleep of one second, right? So if you look at here, I think five iterations previously. Now, if you clear that, and when you start from this, it will run through one second. So one second duration it ran. And you can see the HTTP request send only one. And even iterations you see are one. Because I mentioned sleep time one and I mentioned the duration one second. So one second, uh, potentially one request is going to send it, right? So in similar way, if you mention it two, and if you run through the script, now you will see a two request because you mentioned two seconds. So two requests are uh, now going to send to server. And like, uh, uh, certainly the time get changed here, right? So similarly, I think if you wanted to send it for five users, at one second for each user. Now see, uh, it will start you know, running uh, the same script for five users, right? And each user time is one second. So five requests, virtually the count is five, and virtually is max is five. Okay, because as I mentioned, so instead of mentioning it here, this stuff, you can also mention here uh, the command line itself. That's what I explained you here, where you can see a couple of examples here, like, you know, uh, minus u, what u is found, minus i, that is the interval you are going to mention it for your script. Okay, so I hope you understand the um, uh, demonstration part here for simple load test script running through K6. And we see a couple of other scenarios like you no know, stress testing and uh, scenario-based testing in the coming sessions. Thanks for listening to this video and please subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you.